You have to well, they hit have, into the hole. You to have get to be up. Yeah. You definitely have to middle part of the green to the back part of the green. Yeah. That's but a good shot. You would prefer to be putting up the slope like that. The mirrors are very, very good putt. <laughs> and John now with the and just inside of it. In. That's how to do this. That's the best place to put from on the third point. It is, yeah. Now Corker Ryan begin. Delaney. Oh, just broke. Corker beginning to move her a little, but certainly Dublin's start to the fr to the, the front line is, is superb. I mean, it really is superb. Mm -hmm. They're um, they're very tight. John Walsh is practically a one man army on his own at the moment. He's yeah, after getting three of the first so. four, and is in great shape. Ray Murphy, we need Ray to, to get a bit of move on now. Now ah, there's a good pop. Kerry are going quite well from what I can gather. Yeah, also Kerry started very well too. It's it's a three three horse race at the moment. Eddie Hennessy, oh. Backspin. That top, that tenth hole is very tough. It is, yeah. It, 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 there's such a steep gradient on on that hole. I mean, yeah. Talk to me about that. Uh, in relation to St Anne's, I mean, it's a very steep course from top to bottom, and uh, isn't that isn't that going to be a huge factor here today? I mean, if you are the wrong side of the hole, um, you could be in deep you trouble. Could be in deep trouble. No, Derek. That for six, he's on the seventh hole now. This is a, a this par. is a real tester. Oh, ah. that's a brilliant putt. He's certainly getting he's, he's certainly keeping the Dublin faithful in, in tune here. Sean Goggins on the tenth. You see the tenth now again. You see see what's happening with that hole with that hole and that ball. He nearly brought the ball back down the slope. Yeah. Paul, Paul O'Brien on the tenth. Tipperary aren't exactly no, in they, the mix at the moment. Yeah, they, they just haven't got it got it moving at the moment. Oh, very unlucky, Paul. That's, that's a few putts Paul has just glided by the hole. Yeah. Now, Derek Very on the 10th hole. We've talked about this hole a little. Oh. Um, now, there's trouble. That's a lot of trouble. Mm. Alan, this is, this is very He needs to get this tricky. down past the hole. Um. I'll move. Alan, I think he knows himself. We have a picture of this, don't we? We, we? we shot something a little earlier. Let's see if we can get that now. Let's see if we can go straight to, to here because he's in real trouble now. One of the most important things about any club hosting a national championship is the challenge that it's going to present to the best players that we have in this particular sport of ours. Now, one of the great things about St. Anne's is that it is one of the steepest courses in the country. From top to bottom, there is a serious gradient on the course. And what we want to show you here is basically how steep some of the greens on this particular course are. If you look very carefully, you'll see that there's quite a steep gradient going from here all the way back down to the front of the green. But more importantly, one thing that the groundsmen and the, and the green keepers in this course have done is they make these greens very, very fast. I'm just gonna show you now, just a quick demonstration of how fast this is. Right here now we've got about a 10 foot putt. It's not very far away, but if you look very carefully, just watch this putt for a second. What I'm gonna try and prove to you is I'm gonna miss this putt and just watch the speed of how this putt goes past the hole. It does not slow down, it does not stop. It will go the same distance past this particular hole. Just lining it up now, trying to miss, but we'll see what happens. And as you see, the ball just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And what you have is a put now that's literally nearly twice the distance. That's the challenge that faces the best players today. Is they're on the wrong side of the hole in St. Anne's. They have to worry you very often about the shot that's coming back. Alan, you never try to miss a putt. Are you joking me? Well, I, I can tell you now, Derek Courtney and he lines this one up. is hoping he doesn't miss this. Yeah, he's, this, is, this is unbelievably tricky. He's got to just t touch this. Even if he does, it's still probably going to go past the hole. That's the look. That even looks fast. Oh. And he is further away from the hole than where he started. He, know, he, knows, he knows how much trouble that has caused. Now, Alan, Dublin were within one shot of the lead mm -hmm. at the moment. And this is, this is a pivotal moment. Well, it's crucial. Uh, it's crucial psychologically because he's not just he, he. If he was putting for a par and maybe he only bogeyed, 
was it only, only going to bogey the hole, that wouldn't be too bad. But yeah. this is to stop a double bogey and a double bogey in pitch and putt is, 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 a, is a serious blow to any team. Derek, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in the game. And I hope he gets this one in now, in fairness. One of the truly great players of the game as well, Frank. I mean, for yeah. years, he, 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 he's just been outstanding as an individual player and as an inter-county player for Dublin. Five is a disaster. Now well, he's got to pick himself up big time now and, and try and make some efforts back. There's a current national stroke play champion, Eddie Carey, on the 14th. And you saw again how fast that putt was. He left himself almost the same distance the other side. Yeah, it's Dublin. Dublin now we're, we're, within, we're within one shot of Cork uh, after the front line and singles. They have to make uh, inroads very rapidly into it. But the holes are running out for Dublin, whereas Cork there. have a number of holes to play. There's Darren Kyo for Kildare. That's a great chip. That's a very good chip out of a very tricky bunker. Stephen Murray for Dublin. Good chip on 15. JR. Now, JR Crandall is playing absolutely superb pitch and put. Um, a little unlucky there, but that's a tough, that's a tough shot to 14 toll. Darren O'Reilly on 15. Yeah, that's, that's what Dublin needs. Huh? Well, it keeps Dublin in the hunt anyway. You know, JR Crandall on the 14, chipping back. Yeah, just testing here. JR is nine under par at the moment through 13 holes. Which is superb. That's superb. A, that bears out your early theory that players individually would do better than in the current uh, than the foursomes format. Yeah, and uh, that certainly bear, bears that theory out. Here he is on fifteen, a little bit short. Good line, but a little bit short. It's still a chance. Tough puff from there, though. That's a big breaker from the right. He's going to have to play that outside the hole. Kerry are going well though. Kerry are well. going very Kerry, well. Kerry, yeah. uh, it depends as well on how well they finish. They're coming in behind Dublin now, yeah. and uh, uh, they're going well. I mean, Dublin obviously were leading at the after nine holes and singles because they were out first, uh, but Kerry have a very good chance of catching Dublin, I would say. And uh, depending on how they finish over the last five or six holes individually and then collectively, they, they could pull her up the cork too. JR Crandall on 15. This putt does a, it breaks back to the left. Yeah, it comes from above the hole. Down. It's quite sharp breaking at the hole. That's a good firm putt, all right. Oh, yes. Yeah, that is That's superb. Great. Play. 10 under par after 15 holes. That yeah. is just a phenomenal score in St. Anne's. Great William Buckley of Offaly pitching the 14th hole. That's actually the right line to come into yeah, the and 14th hole. Oh, and it just feeds down to the hole. Now, don't. Kieran Dunscombe on a ninth hole. Kieran is struggling. Um, that bunker's a new addition on this course, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's only in the, the recent days. Billy Griffin on the ninth. Putting well, <laughs> isn't he? He's putting well. Billy knows how to get them in from distance, all right. Clear again. Oh, oh and down. And that's it. That's the problem if you're, if you're short and you're anyway slightly right, it feeds down into that bunker. Yeah, it feeds, feeds all the way down. <laughs> Thomas Lynch don't, starts the back nine well. Don't worry, Thomas, it went in. Playing 13. Thomas needs to... Thomas is a, is a talisman, another, another very streaky player as well. And I know this means a lot to him. Playing for Cork on the 13th hole down for two. A oh, good solid pull. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, he's fired up all right. He is, and maybe that's the, the impetus that Cork need. I mean, they, they're just struggling a little bit. They need to up John the pace John on, on the. John John on. Oh, that's a superb shot to that 11th hole. Superb shot to get that ball to up and down in such a short distance to stop. Ray Murphy on 10. As you can see, huge crowds. Following all the players. John, John, John trying to get the birdie on 11. Breaks back in and it's a beautiful putt. I honestly think Thomas Lynch's putt on 13 there has, has given this team a little bit of impetus. They know they're doing well, but uh, they just need to finish it out now. Of course, the home crowd will let the, the players know that they're going well anyway. Brian <laughs> Delaney. 
Do you know what's striking me so far, um, Alan, is that when you're looking at the Cork team, as compared to even some of the other teams, mm -hmm. on every hole, their putts are for twos. Mm -hmm. On every hole, they're giving well, themselves chances. But they're, they're, they've got such strength and depth. You're, the, the quality of, the, of those players from teeth to green is second to none in the country. And, and, and that's why, up to now, they've won the last seven national championships in a row. And, and let's not forget, I mean, in the last 16 years, they've always been in the, in, in the top two. Yeah, it's been a long time since uh, any Cork side, Gen side, finish outside the top two. That's the dominance of, of, of Cork pitch and putter in the current era of the sport. John O'Mara just mm. going around the long side, and he he's just a bit surprised he didn't come back there. Yeah, John Mara. Sheridan for Mead. Johnny Mara is a great talent as well. I, I think he's another guy that could 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 win a national title very soon. Yeah, has an, uh, has won a number of uh, you know high quality events over the years. Sean Goggins for loud pitching fourteen. <laughs> ah, Sean, Sean, <laughs> he'll take that one now. All right, Sean Downs for Mead. Again, look how far past that is. If you're anyway aggressive. And you're not in the middle of the hole. St Anne's is not forgiving at all. There's about a stead out the right. Mm. Sean Beard or um, George Beard. George Beardsley and his backspin is. Are you an advocate of trying to get backspin, or do you think that drop and stop would be the the preferred way of doing things? Well. Uh, yeah, I think drop and stop is ideal because then, uh, then it means you just pick your target and that's where you land the ball. If you've got backspin, eventually what's going to happen is you, you pick your target, you land the ball and the spin takes it away from the hole. You probably start tinkering with where you want to land it on the green or you're trying to land it 10 foot past the hole. So you're taking the hole out of play a lot of the time with too much backspin. And uh, um, I would consider it in the long run poss possibly a problem, especially on fast greens. Yeah. Where the ball's going to just spin and roll and... And, and go with the slope. It's fine measures though. The difference between backspinning and, and dropping and stopping is, is minute, you know, and when you consider the, the standard these guys are playing. Kerry are making a real run for it now at the moment, Alan. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing very well. That's one of the good old yeah, brothers. Darren. Darren, Darren Goodall well. and Jason O'Regan. Jason O'Regan, another fine player um, who's done very well in national match play tournaments, getting to the latter stage on numerous occasions. Yeah. They Just need didn't to hit that putt. Yeah, they need to up it a little bit. Kerry now if they're going to make a challenge to Cork or post a, a, a very good score. 17, uh, another good put by the great man. You know, five times national champion, Sean Dan. Yeah, was voted the player of the millennium last millennium, wasn't it? Or the century. Oh, there's a great chip there. Aha, uh -huh, that's down to do it. Young Mr. Oh, Blake. Yes. And again, in the fairness to Tony, he didn't hit that very hard and it yeah. still went a good few, few feet past the hole. Jonathan Goodall, Jonathan. runner up in the national match play last year. In 2009. Yeah. Good player that now. See, that's when backspin helps you. It does, but again, he had to take on the back of the. Yeah. The back now, of the watch this putt. This is putt we, we discussed early this morning where it's going to come right across the hole. Has he got it? No. No, it didn't. But, but you yeah. see how much it, it, it swerves across. Kerry need to. Kerry are going well. Oh, there's a great shot from Jonathan. They need to. They need to get the last few. I think. Jason O'Regan on seventeen. Will it feed back to the yes, hole? Yes, great it point. Does. Carrier certainly mounting the challenge. And uh, Damien Fleming, Irish Open champion, two thousand and nine. Oh, that's a superb tee shot. Right side of the hole as well. Mike Brown. Another great shot from Kerry. Kerry are really, really putting together a challenge now. Damien Fleming for a birdie on 14. And they, uh, it's another one to their tally. Again, and I'll say it again, that the standard in the singles is just appears so much better than the foursomes. But then again, players are so used to playing singles. That's the way competition yeah. runs uh, in, in Ireland and everywhere else. We're not so used to playing uh, 
partnership competitions. Now, like, Damon's, in, Damon's in deep trouble here on 17. That is an amazing bunker shot from there. Because It's very hard to explain to people how difficult that shot was. He was on the downslope at the back of the bunker. Of a very small pot bunker. Yeah. And that's a great tree. That's, that's a, a fantastic tree. tree. And, and just by our reckoning now, that puts Kerry uh, just slightly ahead of Dublin at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the only team out in the course who can do them all any damage is Cork. But Cork are motoring now. Yeah, yeah they, they're, they're, they're motoring um, right now. They're, they're really beginning. John Cal on 15. The crowd, the crowd are really getting behind the Cork side at the moment. You can just hear it all the time. There's another That's great a, uh, And you see how much that went to John as well. Mm -hmm. Kieran, I think, will be the player that's mm, not a good putt. Kieran's struggling. He, I don't think he'll be the counting player. Thomas Lynch is after getting three of the last four holes. Again, they're all play. I'd say that's coming in from the right-hand side. Perfectly played. And a bit of spin on that golf ball, all right, stopping it dead. Yeah, he's, he, he knows that putt from the, sing, from the foursomes as well. He had the same one. Oh, there's <laughs> a great chip in for Claire. Thomas, Thomas. Lynch. Trying to feed it down to the hole. Ah, so now he's on a roll. Brian Delaney on 15. It's just happening when Cork get going, they get going. This is not the first year they've done it. Uh, we've going, seen this just countless times. Over it's going from strength years. to strength at the moment. And they just feed off it and the players are, are in notes within their grads. History's in the making now, Frank. Yeah, it's, very, it's getting very close. Ray Murphy on 15. That looks good. Another <laughs> excellent shot. Um, little tight. Little high. Ray on 15 now. It's okay, Ray. It's okay. Now, this is the 16th hole. We haven't seen this hole before. John Cahill pitching. 16. Again, everything feeds from the right down to this hole. Now that is a, a superb <laughs> tee shot from John Cow. Can you do any better than that? He'll certainly add to the cork tally with that one as he goes up to tap it in. Right now, uh, Alan Cork are in the lead. They still have uh, all six players on the course and they have a number of holes to play. So I think if they just progress a little bit more, Another couple of twos, and we'll 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 see them home. That's a great shot safely. from Billy Griffin for Claire. Thomas Lynch now in sixteen. <laughs> Who can get inside the closest? Just something I heard, uh, and it had been discussed prior to this competition that for some, whereas a lot of teams seem to have a problem in the back nine and so the Cork team or the Cork players. In scratch cups, individual events, any type of event here, all seem to play this back nine extremely well, and, and we're seeing that right now. Well, There's Alan, another great tee shot. Th this is John now on 16. They're ripping the back nine apart at the moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely destroying it. Ring on 16. Cut that a little flat, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just. Yeah, it seemed to be come a little flat off the face of the club, all right. <laughs> sure. Sure. I it think doesn't matter where you put them at the moment, <laughs> all they see is the hole and that's where the ball is going to. Yeah, the Cork, the Cork guys are just moved up a gear at the moment, they're, they're absolutely flying. John Cal on the last. <sighs> Another way to, uh, to finish. You can see the crowds gathering around now as, as the, the game comes to a combination. I think most people are happy here to see history being made by this outstanding Cork side. There's, uh, they're, they're just pulling away from the from the from from the rest of the teams. Billy's been lucky with the putter so far today. Let's see again. <laughs> I think every time we Billy on the on the camera, he gets too. Likes the cameras, all right. Kieran not had his best day, but he'll be back. He's a great, great talent. I'd still say all the other teams would love to have him today. He still has a reasonable score in. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas Lynch. Lynch on the last. Just slightly under that, I think. Yeah, and um, still, it's not bad to come in from there. You're chipping up the slope to the hole. Oh, he's delighted with his round. Thomas was seven under for the last nine holes. That's superb. 
and you can see the smiles on his face. He's the other thing, the other thing is, uh, has to be said again, and in fairness to the court side, there's a slight bit of breeze has got up I I as they played the back nine, and that that isn't easy. No, it's uh, not. That's back to the green. Now Brian we Delaney, talk about we talk shot. about uh, George Beardsley. Brian Delaney then has no stop. He's he he's the, the opposite. Well, you know, that's it. He puts accuracy in. Here yeah. he is trying to finish <laughs> off, and there is another ball. You know, and that that is just you don't need to be close. Exciting. <laughs> Everybody, John Walsh. Walsh on the last hole. Corker just put icing on the cake at the moment. It's no, there's another solid shot. You see the drop and stop that I'm talking about now. That's mm. that's um, that's exactly what what you try to achieve. Would you put that down to the style of course that is in the Cork area? Uh, well, you see, Cork courses are very tight. You've got places like Conses and, and they're very tight, and the ac pitching accuracy needs to be tremendous. So the last player in for Cork, Ray, Ray Murphy. Murphy, playing the last. Leaves himself below the hole, and a bit of backspin takes it to the fringe. Dublin, good effort. Not going to take it this year though. They're still going to finish among the medals though. And they are there. They're one. They're one shot behind Kerry at the moment, who are in second, but Cork are well ahead. Ray Murphy, Ray finish, Murphy it finish it off. Finish it off in style. Kenneth Kearns for two on 18. Oh, that's that's it. it. Well done. And so finishes the 2010 Intercounty Championship. And, well, as predicted, Cork have won. And judging my count, I think they won by a rather impressive margin. <laughs> yeah, it's. Is it 15 shots? But it's very big anyway. And yeah, like, it's uh, they're just, shots, they're yeah. just going and proving their dominance. And they may have broken the record today, but at the moment, it's very hard to see teams come and beat them uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah, the, the back nine was so impressive, Alan, and we got glimpses of it there, you know, even the 16 toll, they just, it was like they entered in a new gear, and it was spectacular. Well, congratulations to the other teams too, like Kerry did well to finish second, they are the current Munster champions. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to Dublin who finished Dublin. third, because the Inter-County Championship in 2011 is in Port Marnock. Yeah. But it's Cork's day. Let's hear from Cork now. Well, the 2010 Inter-County Championship has finally come to an end, and this is a historical day in Pitch and Putt. I have with me the winning Cork captain, John Walsh, and the winning Cork manager, Mark Keohan. It's historical for the reason that Cork have now won eight successive Inter-County Championships. That's a record. Um, John, we talked earlier. Um, you were confident of your chances. You knew it was a formidable task going out, but by God, did you guys deliver. Yeah, I think um, the St. Anne's call course held up superb. It's a credit to all involved. And I mean, the players on the team, they all performed all through the back nine. We got the puts and I think we won by a good score. We're all delighted and thrilled and I'm thrilled for the lads as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing occasion. But you, you just mentioned something that really, to me, stuck out the difference between yourselves and other, and other teams. Well, the back nine. The back nine here is particularly difficult, but the Cork team made it look easy and it's... Uh, you were saying earlier, Mark, that it was something that Cork are really good at uh, on, on this particular course yeah, on the back nine. I mean, historically, down through county championships and scratch cups, all these Cork lads play well in the back nine when everyone else doesn't. So we were there thereabouts after nine holes and we were very confident going into the back nine, but they, they were unbelievable. They just did. We, we were keeping track of the scores and it was, they were jumping fours and fives instead of ones and twos. Yeah. Record breakers. I yeah. mean, that is just amazing. You've been on all of those teams. During that, uh, during that era, yeah. you know, the last 18 so what? I mean, explain what it makes Cork just so much better than the rest of the teams in Ireland. Well, it is a lot of practice, but there's no bitterness amongst the players either because we're all friends and, I mean, playing together all the time, you know, like, it helps a lot, you know, and like one player playing against another player all the time is great. We're just delighted to win it now today. Just, I mean, historic as it is, but we still have to do it, like, you know. Yeah. And Mark, you've seen players just come. There's just such a, a a level of players coming through all the time. Like you know, Thomas Lynch has come through in the last few years. A few yeah. other people have come through. It's amazing, isn't it? The amount of players it, it, that Cork seem to just produce now. Since I've been involved now with four years, I mean, the team hasn't been the same any year. It's been fantastic, and Thomas Lynch was just outstanding today, and he's he's an incredible prospect. 
So the question is, you have done it before, you have probably celebrated before, but I mean, you're going to be celebrating tonight big time, aren't you? Oh yeah, we'll celebrate tonight in the city, thanks to the sponsors, Hinsel Brothers and the Cork County Board, I suppose we get a few drinks out of them. Yeah, and, and a quick thing just to bring in, I, we shouldn't forget, it's been a great weekend for Cork, I mean, a word on the ladies, I mean, they had a fantastic win yesterday, hadn't they? Fantastic, yeah, it's great for the ladies in Cork because the ladies is dying a small bit like and I mean yesterday they won they won by a lot of shots and I mean it's great for them. I mean I think it'll bring up their confidence now again and it's just, just I'm delighted for the ladies in general and the juveniles as well. The juveniles are coming through as well, you know, and they won the intercounty juveniles as well. Lads, we have it, we're going to hold it, we're going to keep it. I suppose we must pay tribute at this stage to Cork for their wonderful eight in a row. Somebody... <laughs> somebody said sometime last year, what will we do to narrow the gap? We didn't make much impression with changing the format. So we're going starting next Wednesday, marrying them off, see if that do any good. So our congratulations to John Cahill, who is behind me somewhere. I'd also like to extend congratulations to the Kerry and Dublin teams for being runner-up and third, respectively. And to all the competitors, for everyone and every county that took part here today, to all the county boards, clubs, and especially individuals, who made a, an outstanding effort and played, everyone played to the best of their ability and Cork has set the bar. So the 2010 National Intercounty Gens Championship has come to an end. Cork have made history. They've won their eighth straight Intercounty Championship in a row. Is this Cork team the best ever? Absolutely. It's not just the fact that they've won eight in a row. It's the manner in which they have done it. The Cork team was presented with a number of formidable challenges today. The course is one. The St. Anne's course is an amazingly difficult course. The first round forces meant that the competition was proving to be very close. There were a number of teams that were, were in the running after the first round. Cork only led by one shot from Mead. Uh, only a couple of shots back further were Kerry and Limerick and Dublin. So going into the singles round, things weren't looking all the way for Cork to, to make this championship happen. And then Word got through on the course that Dublin had really gone really, really well in the first nine holes of this competition, shooting out to 30 under par. They came in with a score of 35 under par in total, and that, that was a reasonable target to set. The current Munster champion, Kerry, shot 36 under to move into the outright lead by a shot from Dublin. At that stage, it wasn't that predictable that Cork were going to go and win this thing. However, the back nine proved what a great side that this Cork side and any of the other seven sides have been for the last number of years. Each of the players just raised their level with a swagger and an elegance and a class that we've become accustomed to in Irish pitch and put. But it doesn't cease to amaze us when we see such a wonderful standard of pitch and put in, in this sport of ours. Cork won by an incredible 19 shots here in St Anne's today on a fantastic score of 55 under. It does prove that these lads are the greatest team in Irish pitch and put history. Congratulations to Cork. Congratulations to St Anne for hosting an absolutely fantastic championship. It'll host further championships in years to come. I'm Alan Handel.